Hello Dave is brought to you ad-free by my supporters on Patreon. Become a Patreon yourself and get your name listed as a supporter at the end of every video by following the link in the video description. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Hello Dave with Down to Earth Astronomy. It is once again Monday so let's have a look at what's been going on in the last week and we're going to start by having a look at what's been going on um, with Elite. Um, there hasn't really been a lot in terms of announcements from Frontier this week. Um, and I guess that's because, well, they're busy with the whole 3.3 um, beta patch and the uh, the launch of uh, of that patch. Now, they did went out and say like three weeks ago that the beta would be soon. And there was an interview with one of their, I think he was one of the designers in the newsletter on Friday, where they also briefly touched upon this and then say again that the beta is out soon. Um, so hopefully this time, this soon is sooner than the last soon. Because, well, yeah, you never know with Frontier and their soons. Um, but I'm beginning to, ex to suspect that maybe there's been a delay in the launch of this, and that they might have gone out a little bit too early and announced that it was uh, just around the corner. We have seen this before, I can't remember, it was in the 3.1 or the 3.2 patch, where they also said, oh, the patch is going to be out sooner than you think. And since they launched them every quarter, you would, and I think they were like in the middle of the quarter. And then it turned out the patch came out like the second to last day of that quarter. So pretty much as late as you could possibly imagine. So that thing clearly got uh, got delayed for some odd reason. And I'm beginning to expect the same things is happening here. That they're saying, oh, we're just about to be ready, just about to be ready. But they have a few, they, they encounter some few last minute issues that they want to iron out before they put the, the beta build out publicly so we can begin to, uh, to test it. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely be keeping an eye on this, and as always, I'll be uh, I'll be sure to uh, to cover the the beta, and I'll probably start by having a look into the to the mining thing when that comes out. Um, after the patch come out, I think one of the first things I want to do is do a new detailed mining guide. I did one. I think it was one of the first things I did uh, on the, on the channel, so it's a little dated now. Um, but I did, well, it's not really dated because mining hasn't really changed in the last three years. So anyway, but I did a, like a three step, three video guide where when there were first like all the fittings and modules you need, then um, a video about how you locate a good ring, the differences between where you drop into the ring, all that kind of stuff. And then finally some tips and tricks for when you're actually in the ring and mining. And I'm considering doing the same thing here. Um, probably doing first like an overview thing just to, to highlight the new mining changes and then later going back and then do this uh, this detailed guide again because it does need an update. It is, again, three years old, so that thing is, is beginning to be a little dated. And especially with the new updates coming, it will definitely be outdated by then. Um, so yeah, detailed mining guide is definitely coming out. Um, I'll probably not base it on the beta build because if they changed stuff, uh, the things that I could expect them to change doing a build like this is um, is like ammo count in the new um, modules that we're gonna get. Uh, it definitely seems like some of it, at least, is gonna be uh, munition based. Um, like those uh, rockets that we fire into the rock that drills down into the core of the rock and then uh, explode it from the inside. I would expect that to be munition based. And the interesting part here is gonna be, can we synthesize ammunition? I expect we will. And what materials will be available? Because if this, if the materials available you need to synthesize ammo is something that you would naturally get while mining, because you get tons and tons of, uh, of raw materials when mining, then it's really not a problem because you could just use those materials you gather anyway to synthesize new ammo as you go along. So, but anyway, that's that's like something like ammo count or or maybe timers or stuff like that. That's the kind of thing that I expect them to change. So that's why I don't want to go in and do a detailed. Um, um, a detailed guide based on a beta build. I want to wait until the, the live build is out and we have a, a final version or oh, final version of it. But anyway, um, so yeah, again, fairly quiet week um, in Elite, but it has definitely not been a quiet week in space uh, around Earth. It's been quite an interesting week. There's been two major events. Um, one of them, of course, being the whole um, Hubble gyro thing, and then the escape with the um, with the new with the new with the Soyuz uh, launch to ISS. I think I want to start with the with the Soyuz uh, escape. So, at the moment, 
the when we're carrying um, human passengers to and from the International Space Station, it, it's all been done. It's been that pretty much since the um, um, since they retired the space shuttle. That has been done with the Russian Soyuz um, capsule, the Soyuz rocket, and it's been extremely reliable. They use that for like decades now, and I think they've only had three times where they had to use the um, the abort system with humans on board. I'll come back to the abort system in a bit. Um, but what happened this time is I brought a small rocket. This is the top of a um, if a Saturn V model, but we'll, we'll use it because I don't have a, a I don't have a Soyuz model, so that's why we use the Saturn V. But we can still get the basic idea. So what an escape system is is you will often see these towers here on the top of um, of of many rockets, and all along the side here we have small boosters sitting at an angle. So basically small small versions of the big boosters they put at the side, like solid fuel boosters they would put here on the side. And if anything happens, they could either from ground control or inside the capsule click the uh, like push a big red abort button and the whole um, the whole spacecraft will then dislodge. I'll just take off the top here uh, and be able to pull itself away from the rest of the rocket which might be in the middle of a um, unscaled rapid disassembly. So that's the idea with um, um, with an escape tower, and the most of the escape tower needs to have enough power so that even if you have an explosion on the landing pad, that it has enough power to pull the capsule away from the rocket and get it to sufficient altitude that the capsule can deploy its parachute and the parachute has time to, to fold uh, unfold um, before, of course, the capsule hits the ground. So that's the idea. That's the idea with an escape tower like this. This would often be jettisoned. Um, um, before you reach uh, reach space, or maybe at least when you just after you reach space, you don't keep this along for very long. This is just in case stuff goes wrong during the critical stages in the early um, part of the flight. So what happened on the Soyuz is that on the side they would have like boosters. Um, now obviously this is the third stage; they would have it like way down here, but because it wouldn't be in frame, just do it like this. They would have boosters, and and they would have four boosters on each side. They're kind of triangular shaped. And doing launch after the boosters, or just before the boosters run out of fuel, actually, they still have a bit of fuel in them when they separate, they would often separate it. And it's just not like you just don't, don't just cut a rope and then just fall off naturally. You have like an integrated system that makes sure that the on the Soyuz they do like a first they, they, they fall out like this and then they flip out like that. They have an integrated system. And the part that forced that should force the booster to get that uh, rotation away from the from the spacecraft kind of failed on one of the boosters causing the tip to grind along the side of the spacecraft as it separated, obviously causing damage. Potentially there was a, um, a leak in the in that stage. Um, and that's obviously not something you want to be sitting atop on because that could I mean the, the difference between a, a rocket and a bomb is really not that big when it comes down to it. Um, one is controlled, one is less controlled. Um, so, of course, they really wanted to get away. Problem is... That on the Soyuz, they a couple of years, not some time back at least, they changed the um, order on which different things happen in the in the launch, and now they are actually launching the escape tower before they separate the boosters. So at this point in the flight, the escape tower has already been jettisoned. So there's no escape tower left on um, on the spacecraft at this point. Um, so what did the crew do? Now the reason why that that it's okay because the of course, this is a Saturn V, but on this Soyuz, um, the spacecraft or the capsule would be located inside the fairing, like something like this. Now, it doesn't really fit, but you can imagine that, and the escape tower would be gone. So the escape tower would actually be sitting outside the, outside the fairing, and the craft would then be located inside the fairing like this. And what they do is they then have here on the fairing, they also have small uh, escape boosters. The reason why they can jettison the tower so early on is because they only need the tower when they're close to the ground, they're not really moving. As they get up uh, higher up in the, in the atmosphere, they don't need as much power to get sufficient distance because they don't need that altitude to make sure to give the parachute time to escape or to, to fold out. Um, they have enough altitude at this point in the flight. So they, they jettison the escape tower early um, and they do that in order to, um, well, the earlier you ditch payload, 
the more, you know, the, the, yeah, the earlier you ditch um, unneeded modules on the spacecraft, the more payload you can carry. So it's basically to increase the lifting capacity of the rocket. But luckily, they have these small boosters around the side. So while the spacecraft was um, was still inside the fairing, and the escape tower was obviously not there, the whole fairing would then pull itself away. And once they were at a sufficient distance, the uh, the capsule would then fall out of uh, of the bottom of the spacecraft, um, and they could then do a, a return. They ended up like 500 miles downrange from uh, from the launch site. So because this launch fails, that leaves them with a bit of a problem. Because obviously now they have a capsule up there that is now slowly getting dated. But so what they could do is they could do one or two things. They could either send up a unmanned um, capsule that would fly up automatically in dark and everything. And they would then have the capsule they need to go back home. The other option is to force an evacuation of the space station. Even though nothing is wrong. They could send the crew home while the, the capsule they have is uh, the fuel in it is still good. That would of course leave the space station unmanned for the first time in a very very long time, um, and that's a bit of a problem because uh, a thing like the space station needs regular maintenance. So they would need to get crew members back to the space station pretty quickly. Um, because otherwise it's beginning to degrade and then you would have to send up a ton of repair missions where you send people up, they would go on EVA and repair the stuff that's, that's been, uh, that, that's, that's failed while there haven't been any crew members. And then it, it would be a costly process to, to leave the space station unmanned. Um, so I don't think that's an option. I think the most likely option is they're going to send up an unmanned, um, unmanned flight, unmanned Soyuz capsule. Um, just until they figure out what happened and, and why that booster um, but the separation of the booster failed because until that the investigation is over I think it's unlikely they're going to do any manned flights now unmanned flights of course that is just material damage and, and that's of course a lot less severe than if it was actual um, humans on board but anyway rather interesting um, that was the whole Hubble thing that I also quickly want to, uh, to cover um, so back in 2000 okay so let me start somewhere else Hubble is of course beginning to be a um, a very dated telescope. It's um, if you don't know, it's it's the big telescope we have in orbit. It's done a lot of the very stunning images we have of uh, of galaxies and nebulas. And it's already way past the the mission expectancy of uh, of of the telescope. And they did the last scheduled service of Hubble back in two thousand nine. So it's nine years ago now, um, where they replaced pretty much everything that they would expect to fail over time. Um, and one of them is the six gyroscopes that is inside the, uh, the telescope. And they of course use these gyroscopes both to turn the telescope, but also to keep it pointing accurately at whatever object it is for a very extended period of time while it is taking the images. Now, it has six gyros, while it really only needs three. Um, but the problem is these gyros, they will s slowly fail over time because there's a lot of mechanical moving parts. So so stuff like that have a tendency to, uh, to, to fail over time. And through the years, they have been failing one after the other. And they're now down to just two gyros where the Hubble telescope actually needs three to function properly. Now they have found a way to still um, use the telescope with only two working gyros um, but of course it means it's going to be turning a lot slower because they only have the two, uh, two gyroscopes now and the question is if they can still keep it accurately pointing at the target they're going to try and take images of because if they can't well just the slightest movement will blur the image and then there's no, really no point in having the telescope at all I mean they did I think that was like during the last service they also mounted external like handles for a, a to for a like another spacecraft to grab onto um because they were planning to simply deorbit it at some point so the fate of hubble is probably at some point um when it's no longer going to be used they will send up a, a spacecraft and they will deorbit it and then crash it down somewhere probably somewhere in the ocean um i, I don't know where exactly they're going to use the crash site but they're, they're probably going to crash that thing down somewhere 
instead of just leaving it there in space as a, as a big piece of space junk, because space is already pretty populated when it comes to space junk. So, at least now we'll see what happens for how long they can keep Hubble flying, but I have a gut feeling that, um, that it's not going to be uh, operational for too much longer. Um, and whether they're going to leave it or deorbit it, I, I still don't know. I think they're going to deorbit it, um, but we'll have to, uh, to wait and see. So finally, I just want to move on and talk about um, upcoming uh, live streams. Um, as usual, tomorrow's live stream is the dangerous one. Um, and I think the topic tomorrow is I have a, a ship I'm building. I'm building a, a fast federal assault ship right now. And I need a ton of engineering materials. So I'll probably be running out and gather some, um, some engineering materials. Maybe do a little bit of engineering on the ship itself. We'll see how far we can, um, how far I can get. Um, but that's the plan for tomorrow. Do a little bit of, um, of engineering builds and, uh, and shipbuilding. And just having a, a general chat. Um, so that's the plan. There might also be other uh, streams coming up uh, in the near future. Um, we'll wait and see when they actually happen. They have not been completely confirmed yet. At least at the time of this recording. So um, so stay tuned for um, on the channel. Because there will be plenty of League Dangerous live streams this week. Um, and yeah, before we end, I just want to say a big thank you to all you guys who are supporting me on Patreon. It's of course because of you guys that a lot of the stuff, um, I can keep this, uh, this, uh, this show rolling. Um, the money from Patreon all goes, uh, to like camera equipment, microphones, stuff that increases the, um, the viewing pleasure or the, the, the quality of the videos that I do to make it, uh, better to look at for you guys. So if you want to, uh, to support the channel, there is a link for, for Patreon in the description uh, down below. But I really hope that you uh, enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, I'll see you guys in space. Peace.